When the tripod company Hapa reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review their latest tripod, I was a little bit hesitant because yet another tripod company that reaches out and want a free review on YouTube. However, these guys wanted to pay me, so this is a paid review. I am supposed to give them completely honest feedback because this here is a Kickstarter pre-production model. So I can review it as bad as I want to and give them the feedback. So here we go. I gotta admit, I was a little bit intrigued. Obviously because it's a travel tripod, I hate the big bulky tripods. But also when you take out the legs like this, and you can see how it doesn't have a center column. It has like three, which actually gives quite a significant amount of support for the center column or extension part of the tripod. The high-beat tripod comes in at 1.35 kilo, including ball head and measures only 44 centimeters in pack length, so it is a really phenomenal travel tripod. Fully extended, it's 1.5 meters, and additional specification information is available here. Another benefit of the high-beat travel tripod is that the individual leg sections are thicker, resulting in increased stability without compromising on size. This is actually a really cool feature. Now in the promotion material they do say that this tripod is very fast to extend and it's one of the best tripods on the market for that. So uh, let's see how fast it actually is. So hand on the lockets and let's go here. First one. Like honestly I don't know if this year is other than weird competitions on workshops. But uh, well, I guess it was less than 15 seconds. I would say that these locks are decent. I am used to the screw on uh, lockets and I guess these are fine. Maybe a little bit on the flimsy side, but generally I actually think that it could be worse. Like when I retract the tripod completely, you're supposed to be able to like do this and you do need to use quite a lot of hand or finger power to put it in here and get it locked entirely. You can see this one didn't get all the way in. So yeah, I would say legs are decent. Hypi is a Chinese tripod company and has actually been on that market for several years. When they released the Kickstarter campaign of this tripod, it reached more than $100,000 in the first 24 hours. So it is actually a very trusted company. It just haven't really been on the Western market. I for one have never heard about them. So as I said, it is a travel tripod and therefore there's always a cost benefit. You get a small, durable tripod, which is not so tall, but it's also very lightweight compared to like bigger tripods. However, it does have this center column feature, which is not really a center column. It's more like three columns which has some space in between them. And because there's like three points where it attaches to the tripod, it's really, really like not moving at all. You do have to really tighten this one. So that's a downside for it to really work. But once you have tightened it, it's really, really good, really sturdy. So in that way, you can extend it and it is better than what I've seen from a lot of other tripod companies. On top of that, what you can actually do is that you can take this one out and then you have a mini tripod. And even the legs of this mini tripod actually goes all the way down so you can get really close down to the ground and photograph. So what's so cool about this tripod compared to what I'm used to with travel tripods is that you get both the center column feature, but you also get the feature that you can get really down low to the ground. I have not seen that before in travel tripods. What I'm used to is that you can either turn this one around and hang it underneath and then take the legs down or you can switch the legs up and then just turn it around. But you will have your camera upside down. With this one here, you can get close to the ground with the camera in a proper position. On top of that, you can of course take the ball head off of the small tripod and put it on the large tripod. But then you lose the feature 
of the extension. However, the regular tripod can also get close to the ground. So in that way, I would actually say this is a really cool design. Now the point is that in traditional tripods, you have to remove the center column and then put in a smaller center column. Then you can get traditional tripods close to the ground. With the Hypi tripod, you have the feature of both having the center column and also being able to get your camera close to the ground. And that is very innovative. And obviously, if you are into making a complete fool of yourself, you can always use this one as a selfie stick. So let's talk a little bit about the ball head here. So you simply just unlock it, and then you can unlock and move this around. There's a little bit of tension in it. And then, of course, if you want to go into vertical mode, you can always do like this here. I would say that this one here is a little bit small, even in my hands. I don't have the biggest hands but it could be a little bit larger, just a little bit longer, maybe half a centimeter or so longer would actually be really good. When it's all tightened up, the ball head is not entirely tight. I guess you really have to push it in there. Yeah, and I can almost not move it. I think that would be more than sufficient <laughs> tension, even though I can actually move it a little bit. But even with my biggest lenses and biggest camera setup, I don't think that this one here would go anywhere. So yeah, pretty decent ball head. Down here, you can also hear, if I unlock the panorama, you can see there's like degrees down here. There's a little clicking feature. If you don't like that clicking feature in the manual, there's a little screw that you can screw and then you can just have a completely silent panning function. So one thing that may not be completely relevant for everyone out there, but I actually think is a quite cool feature is that within the ball head, there is like this phone holder. So you can actually use your phone and film with your phone in the field. It is quite an expensive phone holder, but nevertheless, it's a cool feature on a travel tripod something I haven't seen before. If you do not like the ball head that comes with the tripod, you can easily attach another, although not always necessary, dependent on the design of that third-party ball head, you may have to unscrew the tightening ring of the Hypi tripod to fit it. Once that's done, you effectively have two tripods to use in the field, which is of course very handy if you do not need the extension capabilities of the mini tripod. So the tripod and ball head, the entire setup comes with this little base plate for the ball head that you of course attach to your camera and then you simply just put it in here and come down here and then you are really locked in. So it actually works really sleek, really well, fits very well and as you can see you simply just to lock it, it goes by itself to the left else you just go to the right and unlock it. So yeah, this works really really well. There's a downside to this that I will talk about in the end of the video. The tripod also comes with two level indicators, one on the ball head and one on the base tripod. So if leveling your tripod is important, that shouldn't be an issue at all. So one thing I so far think is a cool feature of the Hyper Travel Tripod here is that if you take out the feet of the tripod, you can actually see right in there, there is a little spike that you can unscrew. Be sure to not drop all this in the forest floor because you will not find it again. But then you unscrew it and then you have the little spike right there. And then you simply just screw it into the feet like this and screw this one here back on. So in that way you always have your spikes with you. And obviously if you do not want the spikes in there you can just take them out and then have them in a little bag in your camera backpack or something else. But nevertheless, they are in there if you need them. So to a few of the things I forgot to talk about in the field is that the Hyper Tripod also has the traditional hook underneath here so that you can hang all sorts of different stuff in there. I would not suggest to hang your camera backpack while it's windy there. There are also six different quarter inch screw attachment points 
on the tripod. So you can hang all sorts of different camera accessories. So we have one here and we also have on the small tripod here and of course on the other legs. So that's also quite a cool feature. There are also these rubber feet on the mini tripod, which is really good for indoor use or if you're going to put it on concrete or rocks. So there's a lot more tension between the surface you're putting it on and the tripod itself. Really nice. The Hybrid tripod system also has this long base plate that you need to buy separately for $9, which in and of itself is relatively cheap considering what these base plates go for, but this one is supposed to go underneath the foot of a long lens collar. So in that way you can attach the long lens to the tripod with this base plate. But let's get into some of the critiques I have of the Hypey tripod. Now I just came off a Skype call with the chief designer of this tripod. Super nice guy. He's also a photographer himself so he knows all about like rolling around in mud and having to use a tripod. But my biggest issues with this tripod is definitely up here. It is how to attach my current gear which is of course, Arca Swiss compatible, and this is supposed to be Arca Swiss compatible too. But right now, my Peak Design capture clip that I've attached to my small rig L bracket doesn't work with this system here. It simply just doesn't click in. And neither can I use my L bracket on the long side here. Like it doesn't fit either. Now they are working on a solution for this. They are redesigning the top of the ball head right here. So it's supposed to fit both Peak Design base plates, really right stuff base plates, Benro base plates, a lot of other tripod base plates. They get that fixed before the final version ships. I find that the biggest issue I have with the Hypey tripod is I'm very, very worried using it around the sea, seawater, salt water. Imagine getting all that dust and sand and small grains into this tripod. Because yes, I can extend the tripod and yes, I can wash them off after use, but I cannot take it apart. It's not designed to take the leg parts here apart, the leg sections. The only way that you can clean the leg sections on the inside is if you take off the feet, let the tripod dry on the inside, and that does, can take days actually, drying on the inside, and then take a dust blower and blow into here to remove potential dust and sand. That is in no way, shape or form optimal. So personally, I would be very worried about using this tripod around the sea. If I'm just going into a forest, no problem. If I'm using it in a town or a city or anything where it's basically dry and it, there's no risk of like dust and sand coming in, no problem. It shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. But around the sea, let's see what happens. I'm going on a small travel here the coming week from I release this video. And I'm going to bring this one here to some seascape photography and let's see what happens. I'm sure I can break it. <laughs> in the end, what determines if a product is worth investing in is if it solves a problem for you and if it fulfills its purpose. Besides my concerns around using it in a seascape or windy desert situation, I find that the Hypey Travel Tripod definitely fulfills its purpose and in an incredibly innovative way. The awesome three-in-one feature, all the choices for customization, the increased stability over other comparable travel tripods, the company's willingness to listen to feedback and change the product for increased compatibility, and all the other small but impactful features like the phone holder, the quarter screw attachment points, and built-in spikes makes this a well-designed and thought-out tripod. And I've just received an email where they write that they've made the panning knob larger based on feedback from other reviewers. And best of all, although $400 isn't a small sum of money, it's still much cheaper than for example the Peak Design Travel Tripod. If you are interested in this tripod, there is a link down in the description where you can bag it and you can get entire $100 off if you bag it. And then they will, of course, send you the final production model.